It is the beginning of March, and while we don't have any official dates, tickets on sale, or house announcements, there are a lot of weird updates when it comes to HHN this year already. From big IPs potentially coming to the event, to big IPs potentially not coming to the event, and even the possibility of new house locations for HHN Orlando, I'm going to break down what we know right now for you all. Now keep in mind, none of these things are confirmed, these are all rumors at the end of the day. So take everything here with a grain or maybe a handful of salt. Anyways, we got a lot of updates, so let's waste no more time and dive right into this. Now the first update surrounds HHN, but also something rumored to come to Universal Studios Florida at large. This year marks the 40th anniversary of the original Ghostbusters film, and alongside the upcoming Frozen Empire sequel, it seems like Universal may have some plans to celebrate the franchise within the theme park. Rumors have been abound that recently Universal has renegotiated the licensing rights for Ghostbusters in the parks, as they are owned by a third party, Sony specifically. And this is said to materialize through a potential tribute store to celebrate the anniversary, segment in the upcoming Lagoon show, and even a spot within the replacement to the Universal Superstar Parade tentatively titled Universal's Mega Movie Parade. Now I just threw a lot at you, but the most notable evidence of this reintroduction comes by way of an article detailing a story of a historic 1959 Cadillac being purchased by Universal Studios, who were looking to purchase the vehicle to create a recreation of the Ecto-1 the car from the series. So as you can see, it seems like Universal is rather serious in what they might do with the franchise. And this brings us back to HHN and the rumor that because of all of these additions, as well as the release of Frozen Empire, we could see Ghostbusters return to the event this year in a haunted house or even a scare zone. Now Ghostbusters has been featured at HHN before, acting as one of the most popular houses for the event in both Orlando and Hollywood in 2019. And while some might see this as being too short of a window for the Ghostbusters to come back to HHN, I think this could be very interesting if it actually happens. While it might make more sense to incorporate the Frozen Empire movie as a haunted house, I would honestly not be surprised if we just go back to the 1984 classic. They've done that for quite a few years recently, hosting one or more throwback houses that play on the nostalgia of something we've seen before. I'm specifically thinking of Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Halloween from HHN 30 and 31 respectively. And as far as a scare zone goes, I think it could be really unique, really tie into the different characters and aspects of the franchise that may not fit into a haunted house. And it would have to go in New York, right? The Ghostbusters can't really leave New York. I know it might seem like a bit overboard for them to do both a house and a scare zone, and if I were to choose, I'd go with the house for sure. However, regardless what it is, I do think with all of these developments that this could be one of the big properties of the event this year that has a pretty decent shot of coming if the rumors are true. So now I turn it over to you. Would you like to see Ghostbusters return to HHN? Let me know in the comments below. Moving from a big IP that could be coming to the event, let's talk about an IP that may not be coming to the event. While it seemed like it was locked in for a prime spot at HHN 2024, it seems like according to a few new rumors, Five Nights at Freddy's might not be coming to the event this year. This acts like a shock to me and I'm sure many of you because even during last year's event, everyone was talking about how well FNAF could translate to a house and how because of the ties with Blumhouse and HHN, it seemed like a surefire hit. But I guess for whatever reason, this might not be the case, which again, is pretty surprising. For me, I'm not too broken up about it. I am a very casual fan of the series. I played the games when they came out and I thought the movie was a lot of fun, but I'm not the biggest FNAF fan. So if it doesn't end up coming, it won't ruin the event or anything. However, this does get the wheels turning as to what could be coming because Blumhouse did make this post with one of the items on their 2024 bucket list being a return to HHN teasing that they will have some appearance at the event this year. As far as potential Blumhouse properties go, I could see them doing another dual run horrors of Blumhouse House. Blumhouse House? Blumhouse House. Maybe with one half dedicated to their upcoming film Imaginary, which is getting a lot of buzz, especially with this immersive haunt experience they're using to market the film. And I could also see this house having the possibility of reintroducing Megan to the event as that movie also plays with childhood and toys coming to life and was a mega hit at last year's event. 
Also, there is the possibility of the upcoming Wolfman remake getting me house treatment, maybe trying to recapture the success of Exorcist Believer last year by doing an HHN house before the movie releases. Either way, I will reiterate that this is a rumor. Five Nights at Freddy's could totally be coming and this will all age poorly, but if it doesn't, I might look to some of these titles for potential Blumhouse representation at HHN this year. Finally, I wanted to talk about something that piques my interest particularly when it comes to the potential changes coming to the layout of HHN 33. I'm talking Orlando specifically, sorry Hollywood friends, but this is more surrounding Orlando's park. Now if you're tapped into HHN Twitter, you may have seen the building permits and code names revealed for this year's event, indicating house locations that we will be seeing return, and ignoring the mind-boggling code names theme to desserts that I'm not going to try to break down at this time, much of this seemed pretty normal. Sound Siege's 22, 23, and 24 were on there, as well as Fast and Furious and the two sprung tents. However, there was documentation of a mystery location, seemingly named B138, and a surprising lack of the parade buildings. Well now, thanks to Behind the Thrills on Twitter, we see that a permit has been filed under the name B138A and B for two potential new sprung tents arriving to the park. For those who are a bit unclear, a sprung tent is a permanent tent located behind Men in Black Alien Attack that was specifically built to house HHN houses. Last year, the sprung tent houses were The Darkest Deal and Dr. Oddfellow's Twisted Origins specifically. So it looks like based on the context clues and what we're seeing right here, the two house locations occupying the Parade Warehouse buildings, aka Universal Monsters Unmasked and The Last of Us last year, are seemingly not being used, and two new tents are being built as the nine and 10th house location this year. Now to me, this makes a lot of sense. As I mentioned, there is a new parade coming to the park soon and they're gonna likely need as much room as possible to store floats, which was what the parade buildings were designed for originally. You know, it says it in the name. And I also imagine these sprung tent houses are at least a little bit cheaper than the grand soundstage or parade building houses, so I'm sure this benefits Universal a bit money-wise. As much as I enjoy the parade building houses, I am excited if this sprung tent thing actually comes as we're expecting it. Those two tent houses were my absolute favorites last year. I think a lot of the tent houses are really well designed, and in general, they have a track record of housing all-time great haunted houses at HHN. So as someone who's a fan of the sprung tents, I'm very excited if we're going to be getting more at the event this year. While we don't know a whole lot as of right now, this is definitely a story I want to keep my eyes on. It could be something something really interesting and a big change for this year's event for sure. So stay tuned, we're going to be talking about these sprung tents into the future. And that's all we have right now. Of course, we are in early March, and if the past few years have any indication, we should be getting dates and tickets at the very least dropping at the end of this month. As far as house announcements go, I'm honestly not too sure, maybe at the end of this month with tickets and dates, but maybe after that. We are once again in the waiting game, my friends, but I want to know what update was most interesting to you. Would you be interested in seeing more Sprung Tent Houses come to HHN Orlando? Let me know all of your thoughts in the comments below, and if you like this video, like HHN updates, history, and more, let me know by leaving a like and subscribing to the channel, because leaving a like on this video will let me know that you like this style of update, and I'll make more of them in the future. I want to thank you all for watching this video, of course, and I will see you all in the next one. Take care, everybody.